Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Frank Malarsik and this is going to be episode 7 of my portfolio analysis series in which we take a look at the stocks in my por dividend portfolio and just talk about the company and look at some of the financials and just learn about them. So this video is going to be about Aflac, which is an insurance company. It's actually fairly similar to the company I talked about in my latest portfolio analysis series, which was Travelers. So if you haven't seen that, I will leave a link right up here and you can take a look um, for yourself. So let's just hop right into the computer and look at some details and then talk about it a little bit. All right, so right now we're just on the investor relations page for Aflac and just reading the description, basically they're a Fortune 500 company providing financial protection to more than 50 million people worldwide. Uh, so when a policy holder or insured gets sick or hurt, Aflac pays cash benefits promptly and directly to the insured. So Aflac has been in business for more than six decades and their voluntary insurance policies have given policyholders the opportunity to focus on recovery, not financial stress. So it sounds like they are focused on the customer, which is good, um, especially in the insurance space. So just looking at the stock here right now, they're about $45 a share, $44.5 a share. And um, you can see they are about a $31 billion market cap, which is pretty similar to that of Travelers. I think that was around a $34 billion, so it's pretty comparable, I guess. Um, and then their PE ratio, which is pretty astounding to me, is uh, 7 right now, right under 7. We'll talk about their earnings a little bit uh, in a minute. And they pay right around a 3% dividend. Definitely going to touch more on the dividends in the future. And um, they're definitely still, if you look at the one-year chart, they're still down a fair bit from their uh, highs before uh, that crash in March. So definitely could have some recovery still ahead of them, um, but I'm getting ahead of myself a little bit. Uh, and then also we're going to take a look at the most recent quarter's results um, on this 10Q. So this is Q3 of 2020. Um, so we're just going to look at some of the financial statements real quickly. And so you can see for 2020 their revenues were about $5.7 in which was a little bit higher than the $5.5 billion that they had in Q3 of 2019. So that's definitely good to see. Um, but their first three quarters revenue in 2020 is still a little bit down. Uh, so that shows they were definitely hurt in the first two quarters, but they are recovering nicely. So that is good to see. Um, and then the interesting thing here is that when you look at their um, net earnings right here in this line, you can see that their net earnings are about $2.5 billion uh, this quarter. And last year, this quarter, they were $777 million. So that is a huge increase. And um, you can see the reason for that is this income taxes Whereas in 2019, Q3, they paid about $250 million in income taxes. They actually got sort of a tax credit in Q3 of 2020 for $1.3 billion. So we're going to look at this statement that they released um, about their Q3 results. And they basically talk about that uh, tax credit or whatever you want to call it. So they said here... Um, Net, I'll highlight it right here. Net earnings were 2.5 billion, or three dollars and 44 cents per share, compared with 770 million uh, a year ago. And it says this increase in net earnings in the third quarter reflects a 1.4 billion benefit, primarily from the release of valuation allowances on deferred tax benefits, which were allowed due to newly released U.S. tax re regulations. So basically, um, some tax codes or tax laws changed, and that allowed them to get some. Uh, deferred tax benefit basically that was released to them at this time so that is why they saw that big jump in earnings oh sorry wrong tab there uh, so as you can see again we'll go over the earnings three dollars forty four cents compared to last year's one dollar and four cents that's definitely a big spike but at the same time we can understand that that doesn't really matter all that much because uh, of the fact that of what I explained earlier just a minute ago actually so um, also, dividends in this quarter, they paid $0.28, cents, um, which was a $0.01 cent increase from last year. And we're actually going to talk about that in a bit. They actually had a pretty decent dividend increase uh, for this next coming dividend, I think, that they should be paying in March. So we will talk about that as well. And then just going over a little balance sheet action here from Q3, their uh, total investments and cash, which is basically current assets for an insurance company, was about $145 billion. Um, and their total assets is a bit higher at 160 billion and then their total current liabilities basically that they have to pay out 
are 111 billion dollars and their total liabilities are 128 billion so that's actually cool to see um, that their total liabilities of 128 billion is less than the current assets of 146 billion um, so it just looks attractive from a balance sheet standpoint I guess alright so moving on to the 10k report this is the annual report that a company has to file every year to the Securities and Exchange Commission um, so basically we're basically just gonna look at the business and risk factors um, portion of this so if we go down to the business basically um, Aflac is a parent company of a few subsidiaries and basically that makes up those subsidiaries are basically uh, the United States portion and the J Japan portion um, because a large portion of their services are in Japan actually so this right here is just talking about some of their strategies for growth and uh, they're talking about how they introduced the Aflac duck for a marketing campaign and I have to say uh, it's definitely brought about some brand awareness because pretty much everyone uh, knows about the Aflac duck and they know they sell insurance for the most part and um, definitely that can help a company um, I know when I was in a government class in high school um, just name recognition for politicians is a big thing um, so I would assume it's a similar thing for companies and businesses um, just having that name recognition to get people to use your services I guess if we look here we can see that Aflac is Japan is the principal contributor to the consolidated earnings Aflac Japan's revenues including realized gains and losses accounted for 69 percent of the company's total revenues in 2019 compared with 70 percent in 2018 and 2017 and it says that the percentage of the company's total assets attributable to Aflac Japan was 83% and 84% in 2019 and 2018 respectively. So basically um, the majority of their revenues and their assets are part of the Japanese segment of their business. So this is talking about Aflac Japan right here. So this is their all their services that they uh, offer. So they offer cancer, medical and income support. Uh, these are what they call third sector insurances and then under first sector insurances um, Which are basically life insurance products. They have these different types of products as well um, Then they just go over and talk about what each of those means um, Which is definitely valuable if you're going to possibly buy this stock I would definitely look more into this than I'm showing you here I just don't want to read all this stuff because it would make for a very long video um, so then looking at Aflac US, this is basically their insurance products for the US uh, portion of their business. So they have cancer and accident, short term disability, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. And they recently, um, in the past few years, I think they started the Aflac Dental and Vision. Um, so they have that as well. And the one thing I forgot to note is that under competition, they have competition listed for Aflac US and Japan. And basically in the US, they say that they have a lot of competition and they're um, trying as hard as they can but in the Japanese segment basically what they said is that um, they are the market leader I believe in most segments and they have continued that um, for the last few years so it says furthermore the company believes that continued development and maintenance of operating efficiencies will offer allow Aflac Japan to offer affordable products that appeal to consumers the company believes they will remain a leading provider of cancer and medical insurance coverage in Japan so I don't know if that means they are the leader or just one of the top companies, probably just one of the top companies. And then also into their business segment, I like that they talk about these federal initiatives. Basically, they're saying that there are legislations in place and they have to make sure to follow all of that. And that is part of what shapes their business, actually, is following these certain policies from the Affordable Care Act and Dodd-Frank Act and uh, in concerns of privacy as well. Um, and then they talk about some risk factors. So I always like reading some of these. Um, normally I don't read every single paragraph under, but I like to read at least the bolded points here and then maybe read a little bit more to understand what exactly that means. Um, but I just think reading through these risk factors is very valuable. Uh, obviously they talk about con competition, sorry. And then they talk about um, how if their claims exceed the uh, premiums that they collect and that could obviously negatively affect their financial results um, I think at some point they talked about uh, like a big disaster happening and they listed a pandemic as one of those 
uh, potential disasters, which was kind of interesting because this was the 10K report from uh, the end of 2019, so it was probably published in around January of 2020, uh, so that's pretty interesting. Yeah, here it is. They said catastrophic events could adversely affect the company's financial condition and results of operations, as well as the availability of the company's infrastructure and systems. The company's insurance operations are exposed to the risk of catastrophic events, including but not necessarily limited to epidemics, pandemics, tornadoes, hurricanes, uh, etc. So I thought that was very funny that those were included. Um, I'm sure they've been included for years before that, but uh, that was just kind of interesting. And then they definitely included uh, some risk about policy, um, government policy, and that's definitely one of the things that um, an international company like this that operates mainly in two company, two countries can deal with is just um, having to look at the regulations in both countries and comply with both of those. Um, so I was actually doing a some research on a stock that operates primarily in South America recently and they operate in a bunch of different com countries down there so I was thinking about that how that might be an issue um, because all those countries probably have different regulations uh, for different things so they have to work to do that so with Aflac I mean obviously it's just the USA and Japan um, so that's pretty straightforward but it's definitely not going to be as straightforward as if it was just the USA per se so that is one thing to think about in my eyes at least and also because they are in the USA and Japan and obviously all the transactions in Japan occur in yen they are exposed to that currency fluctuation that can happen um, in the yen dollar exchange rate because all their business over there happens in yen but they basically report all their metrics in dollars um, and then they mentioned tax rates which is a governmental policy alright so that's basically all I wanted to cover on the 10k normally I look at the balance sheet um, as well, but we sort of looked at that in the 10Q from quarter three and that it would be more up to date because that was basically three months or sorry three quarters after this 10K was published. Um, so next we're going to go to Seeking Alpha to look at the dividends. Um, so they do pay right around a 3% dividend yield at this point, which is annualized of $1.32 and their payout ratio is just stellar at just under 27%. Um, so obviously a low payout ratio is good, which means they will be able to increase that dividend a lot in the future and um, still uh, be able to pay that out from their earnings. And then their five-year growth rate for that dividend is 7.23%. So honestly, that's not terrible. It's not fantastic either, but for an insurance company, um, I think it is very good five-year growth rate in my opinion. And for a company that has been growing their dividend for 38 consecutive years, as it says here, um, definitely a solid aristocrat and closer to becoming a king than it uh, has been an aristocrat, if that makes sense. And like I was saying before, they did increase their dividend recently, so this next uh, March dividend will be 33 cents instead of 28 cents. So it's a 5 cent increase, which actually is 17%, um, which in my eyes is amazing for any company, but especially for an insurance company, and one that's average right now is around 7%. So I really I uh, was excited to see that and I was excited to share that with you guys as well. So I also wanted to include some info on the outstanding shares because um, that is very important for a shareholder um, to know if their each share is getting more valuable or less valuable. So basically at the end of 2017 they had almost 800 million shares and now at the end of 2019 they have under 750 million shares. So in my eyes that's a pretty steady um, decrease in those shares which is obviously good for us as shareholders um, because then our individual value as a shareholder will increase and we will actually own a larger portion of the company so I actually did a video on the difference between share buybacks and dividends and I'll leave it up here They're definitely both valuable ways for a company to uh, return value to shareholders so just looking at my Fidelity account real quick you can see that Aflac is right here my seventh uh, position by market value. It's currently I just have one share, so it's just the the market value of this position is just one share's worth, so right about forty four and a half dollars. And as you can see, I'm up almost twenty percent on this uh, investment, which is uh, pretty fantastic. Uh, my average cost is right around thirty seven dollars, and they are valued right around forty four dollars right now. Um, but what's even better is I believe when I bought this company in my Robinhood account. 
probably back over the summer or even in the spring, I probably bought around the $32 or $33 mark. Um, so in reality, my gains from this company are uh, much higher than that. And just looking uh, from that chart we looked at earlier, my potential gains if the company is able to recover to the pre-pandemic levels um, is much higher than even this. So I'm really excited for Aflac. I definitely think it's a great company. Um, I have not actually been adding to it recently. I've actually obviously only bought it once. So just because of the current share price around $44.5, I'm really not looking to add to this company anytime soon. Obviously, they are at a bit of a discount from the pre-pandemic levels. Um, so you could see some nice recovery appreciation there. But at the same time, they were a lot lower before and they've already recovered a lot. So that is something to take into account. But the interesting part of that is just that PE is 7, which is just really low. Um, I know financial companies often have a lower PE and definitely insurance companies as well. But the last time I looked, the when I looked at the PE for insurance companies on the Travelers video, uh, the average was around 17 uh, for insurance companies. So a PE of 7 could indicate that it's uh, fair, pretty drastically undervalued, actually. So... I'm definitely not adding to this position, but I would recommend you guys um, do some additional research if you want to consider adding this stock. And like I said before, I'm really not a huge fan of financials, which is part of the reason why as well that I'm not looking to add to this company at the moment, uh, just because I think my exposure to the financial sector is big enough at this moment. And with also JP Morgan has been appreciating pretty rapidly this past week. Um, that financial sector is just getting even bigger in my portfolio. So I really just have no desire to add to the financials at this point unless something was at a super fantastic price. So that's where I stand on it. Uh, obviously, you should do uh, some more research because this was just a brief overview. So that's just a brief rundown of what I'm looking at in Aflac. But if you guys are interested in possibly buying this stock, I would definitely do some more research. Obviously, I'm not a financial advisor by any means, so I encourage you guys to do some more research on your own and come up with your own idea of what you think of the company and what you think it might be worth. And the quote of the video is, whether you think you can or think you can't, you're right. And this one was said by Henry Ford, who was obviously definitely not the best person, but he was an undeniably successful businessman. Um, I mean, he revolutionized the manufacturing and automobile industries, so you got to give him some credit there and realize that this was probably at the core of why he was successful. So I just really like this quote and think it is something that everyone should think about. Um, that's going to be it for this video. If you want to, check out some videos right about here from me. They should be popping up, and I will see you guys in the next one.